Hey friends, it's Thursday, April 2nd. Uh, here's a snapshot. By tomorrow morning, uh, we will go over 1 million cases globally of COVID-19. About 226,000 cases in the U.S., um, 246 in Nebraska, 116 in Douglas County, uh, five deaths in the state of Nebraska. So again, relative to the rest of the world, Nebraska is in a pretty good place. But as I've told you and continue to tell you, we're going to continue to expect to see these numbers go up. So uh, we're not through this by any means. The biggest reality most of us are feeling today right now is that this morning, uh, actually probably last night, Governor Ricketts announced that all schools in Nebraska will remain closed through the end of May, which basically means school's out, guys. And that's a real bummer for a lot of kids, for a lot of teachers, for a lot of parents. Um, so we need to embrace that for the hard news that it is. And I know for some of your kids who are looking forward to going back to school and getting back with their friends and getting back to sort of what feels like normal, um, you're gonna need to help them embrace and move through the difficulty of, man, school's over for the year. Um, that's a hard reality. Now, every week at Coram Deo in our worship, we always do a profession of faith. We always say out loud together some of the truths we believe. And you might wonder, why do we do that in our worship? The reason we do that is because in moments like this, it's helpful to have that as a grounding. Um, it actually becomes useful to us in moments like this. So let me, let me remind you of one of the professions of faith we use uh, from the Heidelberg Catechism. It's question 26 of the Heidelberg Catechism. The question is about the Apostles' Creed. The question is, what do you believe when you say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? So the writers of the Catechism are asking us, hey, when we, when we say that phrase in the Apostles' Creed, what are we saying in that? And here's the answer that the eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who out of nothing created heaven and earth and everything in them, is my God and Father because of Christ his Son. I trust him so much that I do not doubt he will provide whatever I need for my body and soul, and he will turn to my good whatever adversity he sends me in this sad world. He is able to do this because he is Almighty God, he desires to do this because he is a faithful father. You probably noticed I'm reading that off a cue card right down here. I don't have that all memorized. Um, there's two things that are interesting to me about that profession of faith. Number one, that phrase, whatever adversity he sends me in this sad world. Uh, the framers of this catechism recognized, hey, it's a sad world we live in and adversity comes our way. And part of what we need to be grounded in, in the midst of that sadness and adversity, things like school being canceled for the rest of the year, uh, our lives continuing to be restricted and upended. We need to embrace the reality that God, because he is our loving father, is going to turn and use for our good whatever adversity he sends us. So it allows us to remain grounded in moments like this, recognizing, hey, this adversity is real adversity. It's sad, but God is going to use it um, and turn it for good in our lives and the lives of his people. That's one of the things that grounds us um, in a moment like this. And I also like that phrase that says he's able to do this because he's almighty and he desires to do this because he's our faithful father. So as you help your kids process news like this and ground them in those kinds of truths, remind them, hey, God is our faithful father and he's going to take things that are hard and he turns them for good in our lives. And that's one of the things that grounds us and angers us in a moment like this. Now, um, we're heading into a weekend. I always do these briefings Monday through Thursday, and so you won't get one for a few days here. Um, I do want to remind you of a couple things. Number one, our worship on Sundays will continue to use the living room liturgy, which you'll find on the website posted by 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. Again, you're free to do that with your family. You're free to invite friends over if you're comfortable doing that to do it with you. Um, whatever sort of grouping you want to create in your living room or someone else's living room, that's why we're providing that is so we can worship together in that fashion. And then um, a week from then is Easter. And we're still sort of thinking about what are we going to do on Easter? How are we going to try to make it special and unique? It's not going to be what we normally do for Easter. So I'll have more news about that next Monday. Okay, so by next Monday, we'll have some decisions made on how do we want to think about worship on Easter Sunday. 
And uh, so I'll have another update for you about that on Monday. All right. So I'm praying for you this weekend. You pray for me. Again, try to limit your exposure to news because there's a lot of bad news and reasons that people are after clickbait and want you to sort of be considering the most uh, worrisome news out there. Again, let's try to stay grounded and remember whatever adversity our Father sends us in this sad world, um, He's using it for the good of His people. Let's stay rooted in that. I'll see you Monday.